Hi friends, I'm back again. Uh, today in my series of occasional video musings on residents' life and the coronavirus pandemic, I wanted to talk about text messaging. Uh, students are on their phones all the time. We're on their phones all, all the time. Um, and a great way to communicate with them is through the use of short texts, short messages. Uh, they can be great for communicating important updates, or things that a student can respond to when they have time. Uh, and in particular, what I've noticed is during the coronavirus pandemic, the use of text messages by residence life departments has increased. Now, many of you may know that if you use our RoomPack software, you can send text messages to your students as a group uh, or as an individual. Um, and we've seen a lot of interesting use cases of this technology uh, since this all began. And a few ways we've seen text messaging used is for students that are in isolation, uh, coordinating meals with them, checking in on them. Uh, it's nice because it's a less obtrusive way than let's say doing a video chat of, of interacting with a student. Not that you shouldn't do both approaches, but it, it can also help kind of diversify the different ways. And students will always know that they can respond to that text message and get a response back from you. Uh, that's one of the things I love in particular about RoomPack's text messaging features is it will give you a threaded history and it's two-way communication. So you can keep that going with a student uh, back and forth. It's not just a one-way kind of push notification. Uh, the other thing that we're noticing in terms of the use of text messages uh, is to communicate timely information. Uh, your university probably has a text messaging system that they use for, uh, you know, crises that may develop or getting information out uh, campus-wide. But the nice thing about having a residence life texting system uh, is, of course, you know that students that live in residence have different needs uh, and there's different things that they need to know or be reminded of. So um, the text messaging used in that case can be a really great supplement to the messages that your institution is sending. The final one, um, which we haven't seen as much, but there is some of, is the use of text messaging in contact tracing. So if a student contracts coronavirus, uh, they were in contact with certain students, um, you can send rapid communications uh, to them. For me, there's a little bit of a caveat that, you know, do you really want to tell a student who might freak out that they were potentially exposed via a text message? Um, maybe not, um, but as a follow-up communication tool after you've maybe had that conversation with them in a more appropriate medium, uh, I think it could potentially be pretty successful. So that's what I'm currently thinking about is text messaging and college students and the coronavirus and what are just all the different avenues we have for communicating with them? You know, when I used to work in higher education, I used email a lot. Uh, I still use email a lot. But when I switched to working for a private company, um, email didn't have the same currency it did on a college campus. And I think the realization that I came through is that culturally higher ed uh, has a tendency to be slow with technology. Um, and we not only need to meet our students on the platforms and the methods that they use, um, but we also need to prepare students for future work where methods like email aren't the only thing that's available to them. Uh, Microsoft Teams, Slack, chat, chat programs like that, some that many campuses have started using in much more frequency <laughs> within the past few months. Um, but we should mirror the experience that students will have when they enter the workforce. Um, and the nice thing about different communication mediums is you can send different kinds of messages and they're received differently. Uh, back when I did a lot of education around social media and college students, one of the things that I would emphasize to them is pick the medium that's most appropriate for your message. Uh, sometimes that might be in person, sometimes that could be a text, Sometimes that might be an email. Uh, it really depends on what you're trying to communicate and picking the right medium for it. And I think if there is one good thing to come out of this coronavirus pandemic, I think it's gonna push us to think through how we use these different communication methods and what's available to us uh, and really expand our thinking about it.
But uh, I felt that one was a little bit rambly. But that's where my thoughts are in terms of text messaging, communication, residents life in the coronavirus pandemic. So if you have other topics that you want to share or I can illuminate or or see, tell you if I found anything in terms of all the schools that I work with, uh, throw it in the comments uh, wherever you may find this video and I'd be happy to get it to it in the future.